Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Burke and I'm really excited about today's video because I'm going to show you how I completely changed the look of two file cabinets using contact paper. Let's go. So I've discovered I have this weird elbow thing. Stick with me here because it comes full circle to what this video is about. My elbow was hurting because of the angle that I was always holding my arm when I was editing and holding the mouse. My desk was taller and I was looking at taller chairs, but none of them seemed to line up with my desk. They were all for taller tables. So I had a choice of either cutting the legs down on my desk uh, or getting a taller desk so that I could use a taller chair. None of them were making sense. So I thought this was a hand-me-down desk that I've had for almost 10 years. It was 20 years before that. It's done okay, but it's not been a good fit for my actual needs. So I started looking at desks. Holy cow, why are desks so expensive? So as I was looking through different ideas on how to DIY a desk, I came across a vision. And I am in love with it, and I'm duplicating it, but that's not today's video. Part of making the desk was to obtain two file cabinets, which is what today's video is about. I went to a couple of thrift stores. I finally ended up at Habitat for Humanity. And if you have never been there, you guys, you have to check it out. They have just about everything you can think of for larger projects. They have cabinets, doors, windows, large pieces of furniture. They even get close outs for the kitchen cabinets and overflow paints. These are all brand new. You would just need to color tint them. This store had a lot of different options and I was torn between getting two nightstands, two file cabinets. They had these two little oak ones, but I think the white ones were more of what I wanted. So I'm gonna keep looking, but I wanna show you some other things that this store has because I don't think a lot of people know about Habitat for humanity. They have so much large furniture. You're not going to find a lot of little decor pieces, but if you're looking for windows, if you're looking for doors, if you're looking for anything that has to do with building and items to fill in the house like furniture, tables, this is the place to go. The prices are really affordable. The first place I went to had file cabinets for just $10 dollars. This was a little bit more expensive. These were the ones I settled on. The others were just too short, but these were only $20 a piece for oak file cabinets. But once I got it home, for me to paint these was going to be a lot more work than I was willing to do. They had a high gloss on them, which meant I was going to have to sand the living daylights out of them. And all of those little nooks and crannies and shapes, I was looking at getting like seven or eight cans of spray paint because you know your girl does not hand paint. I learned my lesson after my haul tree and bookcases. Spray paint for me is the way to go. But because the prices have gone up on spray paint, I was trying to think of a different way to get these to look white and also not have to spend a ton of time. That's when I came up with using contact paper. I had done this before on different smaller pieces. So I thought I would take a chance and try it out on these file cabinets. The wood that's on top here is for another project. As I said, I am redoing the desks and I can't wait to share that project with you. This is the Duck Brand Easy Liner and this one is made specifically for solid finishes. So I started by taking off all of the hardware and I'm going to go ahead and set all of this aside because once I have it all together, I am going to spray paint it black. I'm going for a farmhouse look and this is such an easy fix. I also made sure to get off any stickers and I wiped it down really well. Now I'm taking the drawers out just so it's easier for me to move around. I don't want them to slide out. I just cut a piece of contact paper for the first side panel. I'm lining up the bottom flush and then I'm just going a little at a time smoothing it out so there are no bubbles. The thing I actually like about this is the wood grain shows through just a little bit so it looks like I have a really high quality coat of paint on here. Once I'm done with that, I trim it down. I started with scissors, but as I went on with the project, I found using an X-Acto knife was actually better. Now, if you'll notice up here at the top, there's a little lip. 
So I'm cutting around every place there is a size change so that I get a really close fit with the contact paper. I'm gonna keep showing you as I go because I know this isn't making sense. But I would use the extra to wrap all the way around so there's seamless coverage on this cabinet. Now I'm not going to be using the tops so I'm not worried about that, but I definitely want the two sides and the full front to be covered. So I'm cutting down a second sheet just a little bit larger. I'm gonna line it up to the bottom again. And I'm gonna smooth as I go, again, making sure there aren't any air bubbles. This was actually so quick to do. Now, when I get to this little lip, I just, with my finger, really press it into the crease so that it fits all the way around. There are no differences. There's no pulling on the contact paper. It just looks like a perfectly adhered coat of paint. Now that I'm on the sides, I'm showing you again. As I pull it around, I'm just with my scissors or the X-Acto knife, slicing anywhere that there's a change in the cabinet. So where the support is, I just cut both above and below, and that means I can wrap it around the rest of the way into the cabinet. I also cut around where the hardware was. If you wanted to, you could take the hardware off and put it underneath. I was going for quick and dirty. <laughs> so I'm doing this again at the bottom, just cutting anywhere there's a transition change in the cabinet and making sure that the contact paper is as snug as possible so it's fitting every side of the surface. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the drawers because at first I was intimidated by the drawers, but it was actually much easier than I expected. I cut a piece slightly larger than the box and I folded it in quarters so that I could get a tiny little crease right in the middle. This helped me line it up with the drawer, but once you flatten it out, you do not see the tiny crease. Once I made sure there were no air bubbles, what I went and did is I pinched the corners around the beveled edge. These drawers had a bevel all the way around. And by pinching that bevel, you can see where the angle is to cut. Let me explain that again. So here I am at the corner and I've pinched the bevel and now I can cut along that diagonal. And this way I can press one beveled edge and then layer the other over it. This gives for perfect coverage, and that way I can wrap the balance of the contact paper around the front of the drawer and onto the back side. For the corners, this first one I didn't do this, but going forward, I cut the corner off, much like you do when you're paper crafting, and this eliminated all of that overage, and it was the perfect way to seam those corners. Now that I've gotten both sides on and the drawers done, Yzma's coming to check in on me. She has settled into our home so nicely. We still very much miss Domino, but she absolutely has been a wonderful addition to our home. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on the face of it. So here I'm cutting a strip that's the full width of that face plate. And this has a lot of different steps to it. I don't mean in what you do, but the actual cutting of the wood. So I went through and really pressed in each step and cut into the wood so that it looked like it was painted. Now I'm going for the support piece, doing the same thing. It's the exact same width and it's easy to cut down if it's too big, but this looks exactly like it would have if I painted it. I then wrapped the excess over the top and on the bottom. You guys, this took such a short amount of time. The whole project was under 20 minutes, but look how great this looks. Now I'm gonna prepare the drawers for the hardware. So I'm cutting out the hole where the lock goes, and I'm just using the X-Acto knife and going all the way around it, testing to make sure it's a snug fit, and then I can go ahead and paint this set of hardware. I do take a sanding block, this one's for nails, and I found that on all the rough exposed edges, if I sand lightly, then there is no surface to lift up and the contact paper will stay perfectly. I did this on any raw edge, especially around the bottom, to take away any extra, but here it is all done. This project was so fast and so easy. Anytime I had an issue, all I had to do was really look at the space I was trying to cover and just cut it down accordingly to fit over. 
This was such a crazy fast project. I'm so happy I played with a contact paper. I don't think anyone would look at this and say, oh, wait, that's contact paper because it looks like such a high quality paint job. And there was no spray paint. There was no ventilation required. There was no dry time needed. It was fast and ridiculously easy. And for me, spray painting the hardware really makes this look like a fresh piece that's going to fit my new decor perfectly. I know you guys wouldn't believe this, but I am lazy. So when I thought about having to do all of the sanding and all the multiple coats of spray paint, I just didn't want to deal with it. I am so glad I tried the contact paper. This is a winner for me. The next time I have to do a bookcase or any type of small piece of furniture, this is the route I'm going to go. I think it would be more difficult on a tabletop because obviously that gets used a lot more. And usually tabletops have different rounded and molded edges. But for a simple piece like this that was mostly straight edges, you guys, I cannot say enough how easy of a project this was. Was. There wasn't any math involved. It was just loosely measure and just keep pressing along until you get a good solid coverage. This was super forgiving and by just cutting off any excess and as I said I found that using the X-Acto knife was easier just to trim it and then any rough edges and I had footage of this. I'm so sorry. I tore apart my office, which you guys are going to see later this week. So my computer was disassembled. So when I was filming, I ran out of room and I had no way to upload it because everything was disassembled. So I didn't get footage of it. But say, for example, this was the bottom and I had the contact paper right up against the edge. By just sanding the bottom of the edge, you won't have any lifting because it almost takes away the lip of the contact paper from the actual item. So this was such a seamless thing. I kept trying to peel it up afterwards and I could take it off if I wanted to, but it wasn't just lifting up on its own. The other reason I like this is you guys know how much I love changing my mind. This allows me to just take the contact paper off at any given time and I still have the beautiful oak finish for when I want something else. Let me know if this is something that you would try or have you already tried it? I've seen that there are new vinyls that you can put on and use a hair dryer on and it will shrink to it. I bought some to try on my front door. It's a little bit pricier though. This roll was only $10. So I have 30 feet of this and there's so much left over. I always use this for my Cricut when I'm doing any type of vinyl work, but I have plenty left over if I want to cover something else and it will match the exact color of my new area. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I could not make these without the support of my patrons, so thank you so much to them. If you'd like to see your name on this list because you enjoy the content that I provide, the Patreon information is down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in just a few days and reveal my new desk. I'm so excited. Bye.